Welcome to the Avamar Client Migration Tool demonstration. In this demonstration, we will perform a source-driven migration. First, let's log into the Source Avamar server. Here, we can run the migrator.pl script. This script examines the different clients on the system and determines which ones are eligible to be migrated with the Avamar Client Migrator tool, and which will need to be migrated with a different method, such as ADME. Here, we can see that the system has two clients with a total of 16 backups. All of these can be migrated with the Avamar Migration tool. Next, we need to enable the Migration tool. This is done by logging into the Avamar server and switching to root user. Change to the slash usr slash local slash avamar slash var slash mc slash server data slash prefs directory and edit the mcserver.xml file. Within this file, find the migrate section and add the following entry key. Migrate underscore feature underscore enabled and set it to true. Save and exit the file and exit the root user account. In order for the changes to the mcserver.xml file to take effect, stop the MCS process and start it. Remember that stopping the MCS process will also stop the scheduler, so restart the scheduler process as well. Now, let's log into the source server with Avmar Administrator. The Manage Migration tool now appears in the tool menu. From this interface, we must first create a migration server to specify the other Avmar server involved in the migration. Since this is a source-driven migration, we will set the target Avmar server as the migration server. Give the migration server a name, provide its host name, and provide the REPL user account credentials, and verify the authentication. Now we can create a migration group. This migration group will migrate all Windows clients. To improve performance, let's select Medium Encryption. The destination Avmar system is already selected since it's the only migration server that we have configured. We can choose which clients to migrate. Let's choose our one Windows server for this migration. We can also filter which backups to migrate. To reduce the size of the migration, let's only migrate the daily and weekly backups. Next, we can select the data domain system on the target server that will store the migrated data. We can also change the expiration date of all backups after migration. Let's make all migrated backups expire after 60 days. We can migrate on a schedule if needed. We will keep the default. Review the migration group settings and click Finish to create the migration group. To run the migration, make sure that it is not disabled. Then, right-click the group and select Migrate Now. The migration can be monitored from the activity window. Right-click the entry and select View Session Log to see its associated log files. If there are any errors during migration, the log files will show details about these errors. Once the migration has finished, Confirm that the various policy items have migrated as well. First, log on to the source server and check the existing datasets, schedules, 
retention policies, and clients. Then, log into the destination server and confirm that those same datasets, schedules, retentions, and clients exist there as well. As we can see, this migration completed successfully. This concludes this video demonstration.